the other thing too is there, there's probably, you know, as you look at a website, there's probably five, 10 things you immediately look at, right? When you're checking the health of your website, when you're checking um, where should we go or what should we do there, you probably are already doing this. You can SOP that into a Looker Studio, Data Studio. I always, I forget they call it Looker Studio now. Um, report. And you probably save yourself a lot of time at a minimum, you know, that when instead of like clicking around the other things, you can get an, a report emailed to you that has the information that you want in it immediately. So it's, it, that's going to just take time away. And then once you've got it focused in too on what you're looking for, uh, you can make much faster decisions. You're listening to Affiliate BI, the business intelligence and affiliate marketing podcast with John Wright, brought to you by Statstrom. So welcome to the Affiliate BI podcast. Today, I got a special guest, Kyle Roof, who does a lot of different things. And I'm going to pass it back to Kyle to share what you do with an SEO agency, uh, SEO tools, and internet marketing goal. Fred, well, thanks for having me. Um, yeah, I'm Kyle Roof, and I'm a co-founder of, a, of High Voltage SEO. We are a multinational SEO agency. We have offices in Phoenix, Berlin, Melbourne, and now in Kingston, Jamaica. Uh, I'm the co-creator, co-founder of Page Optimizer Pro, which is an on-page SEO tool. And I'm one of the co-founders of Internet Marketing Goal, which is a place where um, you can learn how to do SEO. And uh, we also run some tests on Google's algorithm and tests that I run at other people we post there as well. It kind of gains some insights and then kind of matching that with the idea of learning as well uh, kind of comes together within, within that platform. Awesome. Uh, let's jump right into SEO tools. Uh, I consider some of the original, uh, OG SEO tools, the ones that have been around for 10 years, like, you know, the Ahrefs, the SEMrush, and I me, mean, we could even argue like, you know, analytics and stuff like that as the first business intelligence tools in affiliate marketing. Uh, what are the ones you consider to be leading the new wave of SEO tools today? You know, when I, when I look at tools, I, I want something that's light, uh, agile, and I think customizable. And so. Two that really pop out to me are something like a SerpWorks or a Keywords Everywhere. I want real quick insights before I'm, I'm going to jump into a lot of data. And those are the types of tools that allow me to kind of get a quick view of the landscape, kind of a high level view. And then I can dig down within them and customize kind of the output of what I'm looking for uh, in terms of research. But then one other thing I wanted to toss out was uh, like a data for SEO uh, type tool where you can create your own tools. This is where I see things going. One of the things that, you know, you have probably figured out a way to do SEO uh, or to do your research or to do something else. And you're probably using a tool in a certain way that's only for you and not necessarily how that tool was designed, but you're getting the data in a way that you need. You can probably create that and it might even be cheaper than what you're paying for now. It just requires a little upfront work and customization. And so what's really fun about now in business intelligence and, and you can create your own tool to create your own data in a way that's most effective for you. That's uh, an interesting take on it. I don't know how many people are going to go out of their way to not be lazy and um, one, research that and two, actually action it. Well, that's why I make a lot of money, but the opportunity is there for them to do that for themselves as well. That's going to be the, the perfect insight and in, uh, outtake of this whole uh, podcast. <laughs> I just get really gross and start talking money. That's perfect. Exactly. So where does uh, Page Optimizer Pro fit into the grand scheme of the SEO tools, especially with this one you've built? Well, so it, uh, Pop is a, is a surgical tool. You know, it's, it's, it's completely focused on, on, on page SEO, and we're not looking at anything else. We're not looking to be a jack of all trades. We're not looking to be an Ahrefs or, or an SEM rush that has all of the tools. What we're focused on, what we feel we do very well is uh, edge analysis on on page. So not just giving averages or giving you general best practices, but this is the kind of thing that you can actually get an edge on your competitor. And that's, that's what we're looking to do. And we're also completely complimentary, I think, with any other tool you like, like to use. You know, you obviously need one of the big names to, to do a lot of your competitor research. We're perfectly paired with that. And also the price point paired with that. So you don't have to make a judgment call between us and another tool. You're going to use those tools for those other things, but when it comes to the on page, that's where we fit in. Okay. Interesting. Um, the next one is kind of like a, maybe it's a straightforward question, but we, we see a lot of affiliates, especially ones that are very good with SEO kind of, you know, they, they flow to the top. Do you think these uh, people are going to stay at the top 
based on the fact that they're very proficient at these tools. Like, um, I think it's the main differentiator that uh, separates, like, you know, the average from the great. Yeah, you know, well, one one thought there is that the, the best tool is the one that you're actually going to use. And it, it could be a mediocre tool, but if you use it and use it consistently and your team uses it, that's going to be better than the best tool that isn't used. But um, I think top affiliates will stay on top because they have either become real businesses or, or have the ability to emulate real businesses. I don't think anybody disputes that in the last three years, Google has been very hostile to affiliate websites. And it's not because they're affiliate websites. It's because most of those sites are trying to hide who they are or who is responsible for the content. That's kind of the nature of most affiliate sites. And Google doesn't want those sites in, in the index. You know, if somebody is harmed, you know, somebody needs help and they can't figure out who, you know, who is responsible for the website or responsible for the content, then there's no way for them to get redress. And that's, I think, what Google's trying to avoid. And so I think the tools will do one thing for you. But actually, if you want to stay on top, I think from a practical perspective, you want to do the things that a real business does. And the more of those things you can do, the more likely you are to stay at the top, regardless of your techniques or the tools that you're using. Yeah, I think you just mm -hmm. simplified it that, I mean, it's this whole eat um, where you add personality and realness to a site. And um, I think in the space that I've operated in, especially more in the online gambling space, uh, people have never wanted to put any real faces behind it. It's always been aliases or nothing at all. And I think I'm starting to notice a change in rankings. Um, basically, the sites that have been cold and corporate are no longer in. They're, they're being replaced by not just streamers, but people that add, like, you know, any type of realness or video into their content. Oh, for sure. I mean, you, you see, it, you know, I, was, I was talking with some friends at the last conference I was at, and the joke was, uh, eat is no problem if you're an actual company. You know, eat, eat is done. You know, you're just doing the things that, you know, any sites that have issues with eat are the ones that aren't real companies, or the ones that don't want to show who they are, or what, what company is actually behind that site. Those are the sites that actually have eat issues, and those are ones that get hit, hit by those things. So um, tools and data aside, because I think once you get to a certain level, that's when you tip off that Google's going to check check you out. They're not going to waste time on a site that's you know only getting thirty clicks a month. But once you get to the point, you know, and you're in a few hundred clicks, a few thousand clicks, depending on the niche and what's kind of expected for traffic there, that's when I think you know it's not an if, it's a when. And at that point, you need to have presented yourself as real as possible. And it's never taking just one thing. You know, it's never one thing. It's taking as many of those boxes as you can to demonstrate that. You know, there's a real company that's responsible. It's registered somewhere, uh, you know, in a, in a jurisdiction. It's doing what it's supposed to do as a business. There are real people behind it who are known, you know, and not in every situation, the people need to be known, but the business entity needs to be known. Uh, and, and as much of that as you can show, the better. And the more likely you are to stay at the top, kind of keep those rankings that you attained um, by protecting yourself, by showing that you're an, a real, a real thing. So based on all of that, would you say that, you know, that I think there's always been affiliates that if they can blast out a thousand websites and they're getting rankings, whether they experiment and it doesn't cost them a lot, uh, maybe this is actually going to stop a lot of this. Um, uh, what's the word for it? Just like people trying to blast out thousands of websites going, let me try to see if it works. And if I can cannibalize more rankings, great. I, I've, I've seen a lot of affiliates actually make a lot of money from this, but I'm wondering if this part of their business is actually going to suffer from it. I think you need to decide, you know, if you're going to chase things that way, uh, I think in the end, you end up spending the same amount of time and the same amount of money and earning the same amount of money than if you had done a long-term play. So I think it's like how susceptible you are to ulcers is probably the decision-making factor where if you can live by a spike and die and then bring it back again and then die. And if you can live like that and, and your heart can take it, then then maybe that's a, that's a choice for you. I personally cannot. I'm going to try <laughs> you know, the long evergreen approach. And I think honestly, in the end, you end up at the same place. You know, the, the revenues are the same. It's just one is a little more sexy, you know, cause you are, woo uh, woo I think that is, oh, you know, it's not, you know, uh, when I show graphs, my graphs are not terribly sexy. It's just this long, slow gain over a year rather than this crazy spike going up. And we, you know, we made a thousand dollars in two minutes after launching the site. I'm, I'm never going to be in that situation. 
So I think it's kind of a decision on how you want to do it. But in the end, you'll probably end up in the same location or same end result. And, and I think uh, we all know that uh, people that get in affiliate marketing or want to get in affiliate marketing, um, they're always looking for this. How do I make a lot of money in a short period of time with exactly. little effort? And I want this passive lifestyle that I think everyone has, which is not really a reality. No, no. Like the, as soon as you start doing anything in the web, there's this like dream that you're working the four hour work week, right? That's a lie. Like, um, I'm fairly confident that he did not write that book in four hours a week. Yeah. And therein lies the lie. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, that's like that to me, that's the most like disingenuous thing I've ever heard in my entire life. When you know that the work that he did to present that concept did not take four hours a week. But that said, uh, as soon as you get online, there is the appeal of, I can work from anywhere. I can work any hours you want. Just what you didn't realize is any hours you want was 24. You know, and that's, and that's what you end up working in anything when, once you get into online work. Okay. Now I want to get into data where, uh, are you able to share any stories or insights of some projects you work on that where data or any tools, uh, kind of revealed some insights or some big wins, like things that were just totally unexpected. Yeah. So it's important to understand the end goal when you're like uh, doing any kind of putting a project together, looking at any kind of data, what are you actually trying to do? You know, in the end, it's probably something related to traffic or, or thereabouts. I'm, I'm reminded of the story of um, in the space race, um, a pin doesn't work in space. And so uh, the Americans spent a ton of money uh, to develop this amazing pen that could actually write in space. It actually writes underground or excuse me, underwater. It, it writes through grease. It writes in, you know, 200 degrees Fahrenheit. It's, it's absolutely unbelievable. And they spent millions and millions of dollars on it, but there you have it. Do you know what the Soviets did? They used a pencil. The goal wasn't, I need a pen to write in space. The goal was, I just need to write in space and the pencil works perfectly fine. And so when you think about that uh, in, in SEO, like people want to do these amazing things, you know, and they want this insight that's out of control, but really at the end of the day, the, the result or what you need is, is traffic and getting there is the key. One thing data wise that I found is a CTR by rank report. This is where you take all of your keywords, removing branded traffic, take all of your keywords and you can actually see how your site performs in each position, say one through 10. And what you'll find, which is going to be an eye opener for a lot of people, is that it's nowhere near what the white papers say you're getting. Nowhere near whatsoever. I've never seen a site that actually matches the, the white papers and what they say, like position one gets, position two gets, position three gets. But that aside, once you find your averages, like if you have a, a, a keyword in the fifth spot, and let's say just as a number, you should be getting an 8% click through rate. You can go through and look at all your keywords that are ranking in the fifth spot. And what you might find is something that's ranking like Second, uh, getting two or three percent click to rate, which meaning you're leaving like five or six percent on the tape. You can then go back through, and that's probably just tweaking a title or a meta description to match the intent of the search. And so the idea is you didn't do anything really crazy fancy, but you're just taking advantage of the traffic you should be getting based on the work that you did. And this is data analysis that I love because then you can go in and get these gains of like one, two percent a month over the span of a year and not even really do SEO. You know, you're actually just getting the clicks that you should be getting. And this type of data, I think is wildly insightful as a kind of thing that will give you that kind of evergreen growth while you're doing all your other things. You know, while you're doing that, it's, it's simple, it's easy, it's straightforward and turns into huge gains. Wow, you, you've just simplified it so much that it's uh, when everyone spends so much time on analysis and analysis paralysis, it's uh, here's a low hanging fruit that probably might be the most important thing you could actually do on on anything for your website. Every site, every site has this too. All of them. It's really great. You can go right in. It's one of the things when you're looking for like a quick win right now situation, this is it. You know, what can we do? What can we add to our, our tool belt that we can do every month that is going to bring returns? And this is it. All right. Got a little bit of homework too, but uh, not a lot. Uh, next question I've got is, I mean, everyone's talking about AI, everything. Uh, what are some interesting experiments or tools that you see that combine AI with SEO um, and maybe beyond uh, content? One thing that we're working on right now with uh, AI is forecasting models. And what we're doing in particular is when you've got a page that has some data, um, you know, let's say you've got a page on page two 
right? And you've got all these things. And the, the idea would be, of course, let's work on that and see if we can push it up to page one. Something that we're working on is an ROI model where should we do that in the first place? If we push to page one, what's the likely outcome? How much more traffic could we anticipate? And then from that traffic, how much revenue can we get? And this is really kind of helping us make the decision of, is it worth it to go for it? So I think on a base level, a lot of people look at like, well, it's on page two or it's on page three. Let's see if we can fight to move it up because it's so close. But I want to go one more level because resources are finite. You, you don't have unlimited time, budget, uh, or, or whatever. But so we want to make as the best informed decisions that we can. And so this is something that we're playing with right now is a forecasting model with AI to say like, okay, these are actually of the 10 pages that are on page two, these are the three that actually have the best opportunity for traffic and revenue. And those are the ones we're going to focus on. That's an interesting take. I mean, uh, I, I think when everyone just thinks about AI and SEO, they're just thinking about automated content. And I think there's a lot of people that they're doing it in a pretty lazy way where it's like, let's just use straight up chat GPT, write an article, paste it, and, you know, wondering why things aren't working. That's a fast track to disaster, I think, um, where, and Google's already dealt with this issue, by the way, and if people aren't aware of the generative AI is a language model that's guessing at the correct word that should come next. And it's doing a way that's basically a fancy spinner. This is Spinner Chief from 2012 that we were all playing with back in the day. It is just a nicer version of that. It's, it's a much more advanced version for sure, but it is at the end of the day, just a spinner. And Google's already dealt with, um, duplicate content, you know, as soon as they realize that this isn't adding, adding anything new to the conversation, it starts to devalue the content and it starts to devalue the site. And so once it I can identify, it's not upset that you're using AI content, it's upset that you haven't added anything to that. And as a result, you just fall into that duplicate content, uh, mechanism that Google already has in place to devalue your content. So Using it for that, just in its pure sense, is, is a straight recipe for disaster. I would try to find some other way to use AI um, than just that. Yeah, basically, it's like in terms of like hiring content writers, um, I think uh, what a lot of people have done, like it's almost like the same analogy as using ChatGPT to write your content. They'll go, can I get the cheapest writer I can find that maybe isn't an expert in that field? And they're paying them like, you know, one cent per word type of thing. And they're going, okay, I'm going to fill out I'm going to get like 10 pages done per day, spend the least amount of money. And I'm going to make it just a, a straight up guess that you would say, don't do that, spend more money, get quality writer and basically take a slower quality approach rather than I, I just see people blasting out know, low quality content all the time. And I'm going to put my hand up. I've been guilty of that in the past. And when it's not worked, I'm like, can't do this again. <laughs> so I wouldn't spend my money on the writer. I would spend my money on the editor. So a way to put your content together would be if you had, say, you know, a bunch of writers from the Philippines who write excellent English, uh, but it might not be the most polished uh, article you've ever seen. The, the, the key is in the, is in the editor, the person that can take that and edit for tone, voice, facts, and uniqueness. And, and that's what you, and that's where you want to spend your money. What I think something like a chat GPT or, or um, generative AI has done is you might be able to get rid of that initial step and you could use it for that first step, that first draft where you might've been spending three, four cents a word. You can actually take that down to fractions of a cent a word and then spend more on the editor to come in and make it that unique article that's on brand on point and is factual. And so what I would do in this situation, I think it's an opportunity to maybe spend more money on your editor to get somebody on that. end that's a little bit better than maybe that original first draft you're paying a little bit more for. Interesting. Um, I've had a, a couple of people on the, uh, this podcast that uh, they do data courses and I think your internet marketing gold courses maybe aren't necessarily focused as much on data, but I mean, it is like, I think uh, the tagline is like, it's like the Netflix for SEO. So I just want to talk about like, what would you say, say are the most interesting courses there for someone getting started in affiliate marketing going, okay, where do I, where do I start? Like, what do I look at? Well, you know, actually two things on that. We do have a data for SEO course that's focused on things that you can pull in from say a Google analytics or from a search console into Google sheets and make your own data, which I think is a huge first step forward. And I think very liberating. I mentioned before about using something like data for SEO. A first step would just be 
incorporating like say um, search console into a Google sheet and getting the data in the way that you need it to make informed decisions, that right there is going to take you up several rungs on the SEO ladder in terms of your ability. It also gives you IP. At that point, you actually have something physical that, that you have created. And um, that actually gives you, you're working towards a real company that can actually be sold at that point. Um, so we have, we have that right there. We have a few courses on affiliate marketing as well. Some that uh, are on the basic side, if you are a beginner side, they're like, how do I get into this? Um, versus some that are a little, uh, we're launching one this month. Now I think about it next month hmm. when this comes out. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> I mean, today. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm sure people know they're a bit of a lag. Uh, when these things are recorded versus when they come out. But in August, um, now we've got a really nice affiliate course coming out that looks pretty sweet. Um, so there, we kind of cover the gamut in terms of, of that. And then you can kind of um, put tools in the tool belt as well on a, a lot of different topics. Um, if you like white hat work, I have a white hat course that people like. Uh, my on-page course is really what I'm known for as well. And you can really get in the weeds and on page. Yeah. Probably if you're looking, if it's a Tuesday night and you're looking to get some sleep, and learn some SEO. <laughs> That's a good one to turn on right there. But yeah, so we kind of cover a lot of it um, from all, all angles, I think, in terms of where you're at in your SEO journey and, and what you're looking to, to do. Going back to uh, Google Search Console and talking about like all the different reports you can get, would you, uh, like, do you make use of like tools like database tools like Looker, where you can build your own dashboards? Would you say 100%. That's, that would be a good exercise for someone to do where you're kind of like, like you said, you're building that IP where look at something you can share to a potential owner. And it's not even just doing that. It's basically look, have, a, have your own dashboard of going, what's important for you to look at on your own site, as opposed to analytics and uh, search console. I mean, they're great, but you have to dig in. Your situation's not going to be the same as someone else's. So that's why we don't make standardized templates. That's 100% right. And the other thing too is there, there's probably, you know, as you look at a website, there's probably five, 10 things you immediately look at, right? When you're checking the health of your website, when you're checking um, where should we go or what should we do there, you probably are already doing this. You can SOP that into a Looker Studio, Data Studio. I always, I forget they call it Looker Studio now. Um, report. And you probably save yourself a lot of time at a minimum, you know, that when instead of like clicking around the other things, you can get an, a report emailed to you that has the information that you want in it immediately. So it's, it, that's gonna just take time away. And then once you've got it focused in too on what you're looking for, uh, you can make much faster decisions, much more informed decisions. And you can start comparing data a little bit better too. So on, intuitively, we probably compare things just like, oh, I remember looking at this yesterday and it looked like this, and now I'm looking at it today and it looks like that. But it's a lot better when you have the data to really, instead of a, a gut instinct, uh, comparison to actually have the comparison data and you can put that into uh, a looker studio or if you don't even want that fancy you can put it into a google sheet um very easily and and get it crafted in the way that you need to see it so it makes sense to you and what would be your quick guess of what percentage of affiliates out there that do stuff like this point zero zero one yeah that might be generous but that's not that's not endemic to affiliates though that's just seos the, the thing that it, about SEO is that it's, it's such a low bar to entry. Essentially, I mean, nobody has a degree in SEO, you know, and you didn't have to get anybody's permission. You know, there's no licensing for it. It's simply, I'm doing it now, which is great on the one hand, because I know I had no qualifications other than I would like to be an SEO now when I started. But um, because there aren't any industry standards, there aren't any industry standards on how you should hold yourself as a professional or what you should be accountable for. And those are the things that you need to create. And so while that's for the bar to entry, what have you rise to the top because they, they do those things, you know, and then the ones that really founder or struggle or end up giving up are, I can tell you they're the ones that aren't doing those things for sure. Makes sense. Uh, next question I have, it's kind of something I, I touched upon earlier about talking about, you know, how SEOs get to the top and, you know, is. I know in iGaming, a lot of people say like this SEO space is kind of saturated. And I think with the, regardless of what ChatGPT is doing for content, I think we see like an immense amount of content being produced. If you think uh, this space is possibly a little saturated, what other marketing or content channels do you think affiliates should pay attention to? 
First, though, I, I disagree with the premise. I don't think it's saturated. And I really enjoy when something like ChatGPT comes out because I don't know how old you are, but if you can remember back to um, February 2023, um, SEO is about to die. <laughs> and we're, we're past that and somehow it has. I've been doing SEO for over a decade. Every six months, SEO is dying. But what happens is, is, is it's usually dying in a slow death. And then there's, the, and I would say there are three or four moments I can remember that um, where something was really killing it. And in each of those moments, there was a contraction of SEOs and service providers and people that were in the game. And in those moments, I realized that some people, you know, businesses fail in the best of times. And then when they're stressed, then more fail faster. And it's very true within, within SEO. SEOs are failing all the time, even in up economies. Uh, when there's any kind of stress, any kind of down economy, any kind of other external factor, you will see more of a contraction. What I've found in those situations, which I think we're experiencing right now, is that I make more money because more people are, are falling away. They're, they're thinking it's not worth it. They don't know how to pivot. The, they were struggling to begin with. And now this is just one more thing that they can handle or really does tank their business. And so in these situations of uncertainty, that's when um, you can really make a lot of money and you can really be successful because I think there's a contraction of people that are service providers, people that are doing their own SEO, people that are doing their own affiliate sites for sure. So I do disagree with the premise slightly that, that it's saturated. That said, um, in terms of channels, I've always found it interesting that people never look at their own SERPs. You know, they will put their keywords into tools and they'll get their data out of it. But at the end of the day, they never actually go and look at the actual thing. And that's dangerous because you're going to miss what's there, what's, what's obviously in front of you. And a lot of SERPs have a lot of features that people don't take advantage of. You know, they, uh, uh, there's like carousels, there's the people also ask, you know, there might be snippets, there might be a new feature for your, you know, there might be four or five features available on each SERP and they're often not optimizing to potentially get into those areas because they never really took the time to look. And so uh, I do think there are external things you can do, but the very first thing is you're already working hard for this keyword. You're already trying to get into this cluster. Look what's and see what's there because there are probably two or three other channels that you're missing that wouldn't take that much more work or you might be able to land in a couple more of them. And that's just going to increase your traffic right then and there without doing any extra, extra heavy lifting or trying to find a new way to do it. If you want platforms outside, I think you do need to figure out where your audience is and then go to that place. So by and large, I provide services, I provide tools, I provide education. My audience is on LinkedIn and, and we crush it on LinkedIn. My posts get 10,000 to 100,000 views when we put them up. When we're, then we do it in an educational way, just giving information. This is Kyle's thoughts essentially in, in like little short videos. Those have been wildly popular. That's not for everyone. A lot of people go on to LinkedIn and they can't do anything. They don't get anything out of it because I would think their audience might not be there. Their audience is somewhere. Uh, and it might even be, you know, tangential. Um, something I've always wanted to do is to like get like a little old lady blue hair site and put it up to run bingo ads, you know, like, you know, or, but you know what I mean? Like, you know, ultimately I want the bingo traffic, but where is my audience? Well, they're probably buying, uh, cosmetics, beauty products. What are they buying? Okay, I'll do a site and I just want that site to break even on the hair dye so I can run my bingo ads. You know, so like there's probably a place where your audience is and there's a platform where they're living. And even though it's not a direct to what you are trying to sell them, you can probably get in front of them there. And so that's what I would try to ponder. Where is my audience? What are they doing at 1 p.m. in the afternoon on a Tuesday? You know, where might that be? And then I want to go to that place. So that's how I would kind of look at that other traffic you might be able to get. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, talking about like, you know, what percent of people do the extra homework or the, the extra lifting, it kind of comes full circle to go, well, how many people actually even spend any time thinking about their actual audience? Like the way you articulated, you made it sound so simple, but I think uh, in my experience of uh, watching people get into the gambling affiliate space, uh, they just go after the biggest keyword and they're kind of like, no, I'm targeting everything. And I'm basically looking at a couple of these big sites over here and uh, they, they have no concept of an audience, especially a niche audience. You know, in a lot of those cases too, um, every niche has beginners, right? And often those beginner terms, now 
casino and gambling might be really saturated. Somebody might've had this idea in there, but I bet there's a lot of opportunities for educating uh, on how to do. And once, what I've found is if you educate somebody, if you're one of the first to tell them something that resonates, they become brand amb ambassadors for you. You know, they love you. So uh, even in the casino uh, and gambling niches, I bet you could figure out a, 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 an area where there are beginners. And then once you teach them how to play and it resonates, they're yours for life. Um, I always look at those kind of beginner crop situations because that's the crop that always exists. Somebody is always getting interested in it. Somebody's always starting for the first time. Somebody's always needs some introduction to it, has always wanted to do it, but didn't know how. Those audiences exist in nearly every niche. I'd look at those opportunities. And, you know, just even reflecting on what actually exists in the affiliate marketing space in iGaming, it's, uh, it's very true. Uh, very few websites actually look at the beginner going, hey, we're going to hold your hand, get started screenshots of everything like this is signing up this is depositing um this is the withdrawal process like things that you just think are tedious and pointless are i mean any affiliate that i know that has done that they usually do pretty well and they're quite happy that no one wants to take that extra effort to just to I mean, there, do that there are tons of tons of seos you know they, they do courses just for beginners and they obviously have to have the patience of answering the same question a thousand times even though it's in all of your <laughs> it's in all the guides. It's in all the videos. You probably said it five times, four times, yeah. and then someone will still ask the question. You still, you have to have that level of patience, but, uh, those people, those people exist. All right. Last question is, what do you see as the future of affiliate marketing as it intersects with business intelligence? I think one of the biggest things that people are going to want to focus on is semantics, uh, and ontology. Ontology is a concept of how you cluster your concepts. And the reason I say that is that what I see with say AI and stuff like that is an enhanced search in our near future. It's kind of like a keywords everywhere, SERP works where, you know, you click the button and you get data extracted in the way that you want it and, and set up in a way that you want to see it. So then, um, you get the information you want. So I can see that being personalized for people where they, they do the search and then on the top or on the side how they want data presented to them will be available. And so this presents an opportunity because there are going to be two forms of optimization. There's going to be the one that we're doing now to show up in the top 10. But once you're in the top 10, you also want the correct data pulled out that makes you more enticing. You know, that gives them, gives the visitor, the, the user, the information that they're looking for so that they will click into your site. And AI is really built like generative AI and stuff like that is really built on language understanding. And so how your structure your semantic structure is how the terms you have on your page to lead to like this is what this is about i think will be even more important than they are now those kind of things are really good for indexing uh, not necessarily ranking within google's algorithm but i see them becoming more important in that ai extra kind of area where then and uh, information is extracted and so if i were going or i were looking at where i would go i would start studying this up making sure that AI can understand my pages and what the most important sections of my page, my pages are. And, and that's where I, where I see things going in the near future. Um, that makes a lot of sense. And, uh, Kyle, I want to thank you. Um, yeah, it's, uh, all these questions, as much as I try to make it such for it's for this, uh, affiliate audience. I mean, I see a lot of things that I could take on my side as a, a SaaS company and, um, definitely uh, I've got more notes for myself, but, uh, I think this, uh, this is great. Uh, how can people get a hold of you? The easiest thing is um, kyleroof.com. And uh, all my stuff is there. My latest, uh, like this podcast will go on there. And um, all the projects I'm working on get posted there as well. Awesome. I will share some links in the show notes and uh, where we share it as well. So Kyle, thank you so much for doing this. All right. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you, listeners. I'd like to ask for a favor, which is if you can leave a five-star rating and a review wherever you listen to this podcast. This helps us get discovered by others, and we want to make this the best affiliate marketing podcast just for you.